Hello there, this is Kevin Heights, and welcome to our second video in our 2019 webinar series uh, for our admissions essays. And this one is on how to write a graduate letter of recommendation. So today we're going to talk about um, how to craft a letter that will get you into graduate school. And we'll go through a lot of details um, about writing the letter, whether you are the person writing it or the one asking a referee to write it. And if you your referee needs some help you can send this video to them before we get started i want to tell you a bit about uh, word vice and our services we edit all kinds of admissions essays that includes the statement of purpose this letter of recommendation we get hundreds of these uh, every admission season we also do research papers and dissertations and any kind of documents for college or university so please do check us out and if you are registered for this webinar by October 14th, you can get a 10% discount on your first admissions order. So I wanna go through some of the content we'll be discussing. Um, we're gonna talk about the purpose of the recommendation letter, what it does, who should write it, and some of the details that your recommender should know about you, or if you're writing it for the recommender, uh, what sort of details you should include, and what uh, information documents you might need to know to put in there, uh, what information your recommender should know. And then we're going to go into a lot more detail and look at the template of the recommendation letter and some very useful phrases and go through actually a couple of recommendation letter samples so that you can see how the um, useful phrases fit into a real recommendation letter. And we have two examples of those today. So let's first look at this. I thought this was fun. Um, a less than ideal recommendation letter. And this one was written for uh, John Nash, who was a famous mathematician, created the Nash Triangle, I believe. Uh, this is not the kind of recommendation letter you want. It's obviously too short. Um, and the referee just says, this is to recommend that John Nash Jr., who has applied for entrance at Princeton, he's 19 years old and he's graduating, he's a genius. <laughs> so unless you have a letter from uh, an extremely distinguished professor who who is well known uh, throughout the their academic circles, you probably want a little bit more detail about you than this. So the purpose of the recommendation letter is to tell the uh, graduate faculty or the uh, official officials that are admitting you to the university about you. And this should be written in, in a detailed third person discussion of your personal qualities, accomplishments, and experiences. Um, so the referee is talking about you, but from their perspective. So you actually have first person and third person perspectives. Um, the things that should be included are the relationship between you as a recommend recommender, or that I should preface this by saying that the perspective we will may mostly be discussing is that of the recommender. Whether you are the student or the recommender, you should think about um, writing the letter from the recommender's perspective. I, I realize a lot of times, especially in ESL uh, situations, the student might be responsible for writing the letter, but you might have to give the referee your letter to check over and make sure everything is uh, accurate and that they agree to this letter as well. So whoever is responsible for writing this um, needs to be aware of these details. So you need to include a relationship, uh, What, how you know the applicants, the student, you want to talk about the positive characteristics of the applicant. You want to show the applicant's character, skills, and abilities. So give concrete details that evidence uh, why they're so good, why you're recommending them. And then you want to explain why they'd be suitable for the specific program. Um, as far as who should write the letters, and I mentioned here that there's uh, two letters at least, because for most programs they require two letters. So Whatever you choose for one letter, you want the other uh, referee to be someone who's not the exact same kind of um, referee. So at least one letter should be from a past or current professor or academic advisor. So someone from your undergraduate career or graduate career if you're in grad school now. And the second letter should be from an employer, a research advisor, another colleague, or a professor from a different department. So you don't want to professors say from psychology department um, with whom you've had classes. You want to try to find some diversity so you get more perspectives. 
Okay, you want to make sure that your recommender is someone who knows you well and can actually talk about your accomplishments. You don't want to ask a random teacher that you don't have a rapport with to write you a letter. They also need to understand a little bit about the program that you are applying to, the graduate program, and they should be able to say very positive things about you. In your letters, you need to cover a range of skills. You don't need to be extremely specific. It depends on the program. It depends how well the referee knows you and knows your skills and knows the understands the program. But they need to talk about your academic skills, any research abilities that you've demonstrated, your specific experiences in class or in an internship or in a, a, a research setting, and any applied experiences. They can also t uh, write about your personal qualities, but those should be shown through your actual activities and your, your accomplishments, not only saying that you are a great student, but what have you done to prove that. And they should answer these questions. So all of these questions should be uh, easily answered in, in the letter. What is your relationship with the student? Why should the graduate faculty listen to your opinion? That means why is this professor or this instructor or uh, colleague someone that is important enough that the faculty should listen to. So you need to talk about your credentials. What makes this student, this candidate special? So qualities, traits, and personal characteristics. And then after that, what specifically did this student do that impressed you enough to, for you to give permission to, uh, to write a letter, for you to accept writing a letter? And what makes this student qualified for this specific graduate school and program? So the more you know about, about this program, the more you can talk about uh, why this program is prestigious or what specific resources or faculty or courses it has that the student will fit into. So if it's someone, this happens a lot if you've been out of school for a while. If you haven't been in touch with your recommender, you should send them a background information file. And it should include all of this information, classes you've taken, experiences, transcripts if it's pertinent, um, awards, etc. Anything that reminds the, the rep recommender who you are and what you've done. So if you're the one writing this, you might use these as well. But you don't want to be too specific and talk about your GPA on your transcript or go into a lot of details about your job because you have to realize this is a limited amount of space, about one page that you have. Some other information that you want to send to the recommender would be the application due date. And before we go on, you should know that you should do this at least, send this information at least one month before you need the letter so that the recommender has sufficient amount of time to write it for you and that they are, they are busy people, so you need to give them enough time to do this. You can include a copy of recommendation forms if they, there need to be specific forms. Any instructions for submitting? Some schools demand a hard copy and others a soft copy or uh, a digital copy and some some require that you send a letter directly from the referee to the school so you need to make sure you're following the right instructions so you can find those on this, these details on the school's website and any details about the actual programs you're applying to should be sent to the recommender as well so they know what you're re they're recommending you for it will make it easier for them to write a letter about you so let's go right into the template the university letterhead at the top, that means the, the letterhead from the, the school that your recommender works at. So if they work at the University of California, Berkeley, you would have the letterhead. It makes it more official. And you have the sender's name, the address, uh, the phone number, so all of the pertinent information. If you include too much here, it's, it's okay. Um, it's better to include more information so that the recommender can be contacted than too little information. Include the date and the recipient's name and the recipient's institutional address. Um, this may or may not be required. So again, look at the examples and the instructions from your specific school before proceeding. Let's go through each section of the recommendation letter to see what information is usually displayed in what order. We start with a greeting. So that is usually dear, and then the name, if you know the name of the graduate faculty, dear Professor O'Shaughnessy, or to whom it may concern. This is a very common one because we don't know 
exactly to whom the letter is going. Or it could be to the graduate faculty of this university. If your recommender knows which university you're applying to, then use the specific university. If you're applying to multiple universities, make sure that you put the correct university and department or program on the greeting. The first paragraph, the opening paragraph, is where you often will state your position and establish your relationship with the student and give your general assessment of the applicant. So this is sort of your thesis of the letter. It is my absolute pleasure to recommend student's name for admission to sociology program at UC Berkeley. So all these phrases uh, in underlining green are useful phrases that you could actually pretty much copy and paste into your letter uh, because this language is recycled or used a lot to structure these sorts of, of letters. In the second paragraph, you're going to start discussing positive traits, positive uh, skills, and maybe even showing evidence of the trait or skill and talking about anecdotes or short stories that demonstrate the student's trait. For example, if the student is hardworking, you can discuss what they've done in your course to show that they're hardworking. Here's an example. Jane has excellent communication skills. Her written work is both clear and concise, as well as interesting to read. Okay, so the main trait is communication skills. The evidence is her written work is clear and concise. If the, this recommender goes into more detail, she might discuss a specific work that is clear and concise, perhaps a certain paper that she worked on. And this establishes a closer connection between the recommender and the, the applicant. And moving on, you can continue to talk about skills and traits and further evidence of these skills. So each paragraph, as we discussed in uh, other essays, it, such as the SOP, you need to structure this with a kind of main topic followed by supporting details. So this paragraph might start. At a personal level, Jane is a well-disciplined, industrious student with a pleasant personality. Okay, she went well beyond the course expectations. So you, and in this paragraph, the author might discuss how you show how the students showed that they're well disciplined and industrious and pleasant. Um, and then finally, and there, there could be another paragraph, but th these are usually one page in length. They don't usually exceed a page, maybe a page and a half. So you aren't able to go into too many anecdotal details. It needs to be concise. But in the final paragraph is where you summarize and clearly recommend this candidate to the school or program. You restate that this student is someone you want to recommend. So here's an example. Jane is unquestionably an exceptional candidate for graduate study in the anthropology program. Jane's work in developments in anthropology suggests that she would greatly benefit from the opportunities for intellectual development provided by a sustained period of graduate study. And there's a lot of ways to, uh, to, dis to link the student and the graduate program. This is one way. But this goes at the end. It's like your conclusion, your summary statement. Um, you can also include a closing line to remind the, or a call to action to remind the reader what you're, uh, that, that you are writing this letter for a very specific purpose. Um, or in this case, the closing line is uh, telling the reader that they can contact the professor. This is not always included. It, it's kind of assumed in most cases, but if, if, uh, if you do include this, it shows that the author is open to being, to being contacted and that tells the, uh, the graduate faculty that this letter is a little bit more official. Okay, so let's look at our first sample letter of recommendation. Everything you see here in brackets and bold is information that you could put, you could almost take this as a template and put your own information in the bracketed uh, sections. So the first line is the greeting to the recipient. Dear graduate faculty, or to whom it may concern, it is my pleasure to recommend Jane Doe for admission to your program. And then she talks about what her position is right away. I am an associate professor of math at UC Berkeley. I came to know Jane, how, they, how she came to 
know the student. So as you can see in this template, this sample, it's right at the beginning. So position, what is the relationship between the author and the student? Jane distinguished herself by submitting an exceptionally well-researched and interesting project on the hominid artifacts in the Olduvian Gorge. She is one of the very best students that I have taught in the past five years in respect to her writing ability and research skills. So pretty good opening. This author chooses to start with a specific, um, a very specific example of how this student distinguished herself, and that's one way to begin. So position, relationship, general assessment of the applicant. We'll go into another positive trait. Jane is a highly intelligent, is highly intelligent and has good problem solving skills. So the remainder of this paragraph will be discussing how she demonstrated that. Her Olduvian Gorge project demonstrated her ability to come to a detailed understanding of blah, 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 right? So this author is linking the exact uh, curriculum details with the student and showing how the student showed competence in this area, which is extremely important in graduate uh, in graduate school. In the third paragraph, this author discusses another trait, another skill, excellent communication skills. So we can already assume the rest of this paragraph is going to be discussing her communication. Her work is both clear and concise as, interest, as well as interesting to read. She demonstrated her oral articulateness in the discussion sections that were an integral part of the course. So more and more detail as you go on in the paragraph. And although this teacher discusses Olduvian Gorge, this could be a professor that only knows the student in the context of this class, and that's okay. If you don't have an extremely close relationship with your recommender, you don't want to pretend and make up something that you do. You don't want to just say, I, I really love this applicant. She excels in everything she does. She's motivational because it doesn't sound genuine, it doesn't sound realistic, but real concrete facts and details such as these show the reader that um, the author is focusing on specific accomplishments of the student. Okay, major skills, major qualities, and anecdotes. anecdotes. In the fourth paragraph, they discuss another trait, so we'll go into personal details. At a personal level, Jane is a well-disciplined, industrious student with a pleasant personality. How does she demonstrate this? Well, she went well beyond the course requirements and the quantity and quality of her project, putting in a lot of extra research and attending office hours. So this doesn't necessarily pertain to the GPA, the test scores, the, qual the quality of her work, but it shows that she has the drive, the discipline, and the other high-level personality traits that it takes to excel in graduate school. So this is a very important paragraph too. And it also shows that this author knows Jane a little bit more than um, maybe just a typical professor might know a student. In this final paragraph, we have the call to action, why this student will fit in with this program. So you'll see that the author, the recommender, shows that she, he or she understands um, the program that the student is applying for. Jane is unquestioningly, unquestionably an exceptional candidate for graduate study. This, this line is repeated a little bit. It's, it's a little changed, changed a little bit throughout the essay, but um, that's okay. This is sort of a reiteration, just a reminder that th this letter is for the purpose of recommending you for a program. So she's un unquestionably, can unquestionably exceptional candidate for graduate study in this specific program. Her work in this course, whatever the course is, suggests that she would greatly benefit from the opportunities for development provided by a sustained period of graduate study. So she's mentioned, the, the authors mentioned the course that she was in charge of and how Jane would benefit from this course. She's also showing that um, her her qualities would make her a good student and therefore help uh, build the program and the school that she's applying for. She has perseverance, initiative, and intellectual creativity. She's a good fit for the program and the program is will help the student as well. And then finally, in a separate line, we have if, the closing. If I can be of any further assistance or provide you with further information, do not hesitate to contact me. This is template stuff, you could copy and paste this. This doesn't really change much from letter to letter. 
Okay, so you'll see in the next the next um, essay that we look at that it has the similar structure, but it might be a little bit shorter or a little bit lower on details, but it has all of the parts there. But first, let's look at some useful template phrases that you can plug in to your recommendation letter. Use these template phrases to clearly and naturally express your support. So I've broken these down by section. The first section is introducing yourself. And these are just some of the ways to do it. You don't have to use these, but as I've mentioned, there are a uh, limited number of, of phrases that you see in these kind of letters. My name is, author's name, and I have been a professor of math at my university since date. So immediately establishing yourself, your credentials. Um, you could also write, I, want, I write to you today to proudly express my support for the student in applying to your prestigious university. And note that in every paragraph, especially the first time you mention the student's name, you should use their full name. So when I write student here, that means the student's name, not pronoun, not his or her or he or she, but use the student's name first. But you don't have to repeat their name every time. So if you write their name one time in a paragraph, the, the conse consecutive um, iterations of their name can be just pronouns, he, she. Next, in the essay, you are discussing your relationship with the student. I first came to know the student while teaching him, her, in my course, uh, in my anthropology course. And you can give more details about that course. Or I was Jane Doe's thesis advisor during his senior year, junior year. I have known Jane Doe for several years now and can attest to her strengths and quality of character. And these, I've put these in template statements because there's not a lot of detail, right? You have to fill in the detail after you write these, uh, after you put these template statements in. You have to put the concrete details in. In the next section, next paragraph, you could discuss the positive traits. Um, Jane Doe has excellent communication skills. How? Give the details. She is a highly intelligent and competent student who excels in many areas. What are these areas? How does she excel? Not only is Jane Doe, not only is Jane hardworking and thoughtful, but she is also demonstrates kindness and generosity towards her peers. How? Give the details afterwards. Um, for demonstrating evidence of their skills, you can use these uh, template, these template uh, sentences as well. He has shown himself to be a true leader who is able to successfully develop plans and implement them in his or her work. The next line should probably be about those plans. Uh, John Doe demonstrated his independence daily, completing difficult lab exercises by researching outside the class. This would work if the student has actually done lab exercises. Uh, during her internship, Jane Doe consistently managed her work responsibilities diligently and learned quickly. Notice also there's a lot of kind of power adjectives and nouns, responsibilities um, and adverbs, diligently, quickly, consistently, and you have words like excellent, um, you have nouns like communicator, uh, verbs like demonstrated. So it's almost like a CV if you think about the strong power verbs and, and terms you use to squeeze all of the important uh, power out of your writing, you, you use larger and more uh, academic level language. Next, discussing the school and program. So as Harvard University is renowned for its fine arts program, I believe this is an ideal place for John to solidify his abilities and cement his knowledge of fine art. The learning environment that Brown is famous for creates an excellent opportunity for John to apply his skills. And finally, the recommendation, the summary, the repetition of the purpose of the letter. For the above reasons, I am confident that John will make an excellent addition to your graduate program, and I wholeheartedly support him or her support him for admission to your program. Thank you for your time and attention in reading my endorsement. This is also nice at the end to have a thank you. Um, it's, it's just a pleasantry that uh, a graduate official reading hundreds of letters will appreciate. So, and it's easy to include. It doesn't take up many words. 
Okay, so let's look at one more sample, and I want you, I have numbered these so you can see that each part is in line with our previous samples. We have the greeting, opening paragraph, um, and then additional positive traits and, skill, and skills that are uh, put in details. But I haven't highlighted anything. I want you to see where the template language is and where the important details are. As you can see in the first paragraph, the recommender immediately talks about what position she holds. As a tenured professor of sociology at Beacon College, I have had the pleasure of knowing, knowing Julia Kim for the last four years. So you don't have to make that a separate sentence. You don't have to say, I am a tenured professor of sociology. I have known Julia. You can combine that into one sentence with this sort of template as a, as a, uh, as Julia's boss for the past three years, I've come to know her. And those con co more complex sentences will impress the graduate faculty more as well. Um, moving on to the second paragraph, we are evidencing Julia's positive skills or traits. Because of Julia's proven dedication to coursework and other academic endeavors, I feel confident that she will continue to succeed in her graduate studies. Word like confident, power word, academic endeavors, a little bit vague, but we'll go into more detail. Um, not only was she one of the highest achievers in my course in 2017, she also spent much more time in my office than most students, asking pertinent questions to assist her with personal study of social behavior. In class, she has proven to be a take charge person who is able to successfully develop work plans and implement them. As you can see, comparing this essay to the previous one, this one lacks detail. It doesn't have, it's not talking about the Olduvian Gorge or the specific details of her study. So it might be a good idea, if possible, to include at least one project you worked on or at least one specific detail of what you did in class. Because as an editor, I read a lot of these letters and if they're too vague, if they just include language about academic endeavors, um, she's great, she's curious, without details, it doesn't stand out as much. So if you if you can point to what you've accomplished in a, in a course, then that will be something that the faculty will be interested in and will help you stand out. Okay, so we're gonna look at some more evidence of characters and skills. And as a transition, you can wor use words like also, or in addition, or furthermore. Julia has also assisted us in our admissions office. So this is another thing that she's done. That's why they've separated it. This is another activity. Not only classwork, but also she's helped us in our office. She has successfully demonstrated leadership ability by counseling new and prospective students. Her advice has been a great help to these students. So you've this recommender has shown that Julia is a great student. She's curious, she's smart, but she also is helpful and a good leader. Excellent traits to have in a graduate student. Finally, we have the call to action. And you can note that this first sentence sort of shows the, um, shows the intention right away. It is for these reasons that I offer high recommendations for Julia Kim without reservation. Sort of a template sentence as well. It is for these reasons that I offer high recommendations for student X without reservation. Your program is among the top in the nation for urban studies, and Julia demonstrates both a level of empathy and awareness. So a targeting of the student to the specific program, mentioning the program name. Um, you could say your university, or you could mention the university's name. Uh, and then reiterating the, the skills that you talked about, her drive and abilities, her awareness of statistics, her level of empathy. Finally, if you have any questions regarding this recommendation, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you for your time and consideration. So you can see that these letters are instructionally run of the mill. They shouldn't deviate too much unless you have a really wild and creative approach that you want to try um, that could be risky. But you do want to include details that show how exactly you are a good, uh, a good candidate for a graduate program, especially if the program is competitive. So let's discuss some overall writing tips. And we mentioned these in our SOP uh, webinar as well. You want to show and not tell and not just list. So what does that mean? Telling includes few details. Stephen accomplished a lot during his internship. 
What's a lot? Well, let's see. He did a lot of great work, okay? That's not detailed. And made some significant accomplishments for our company. What are these accomplishments? We're still waiting for them. He also motivated... He also... We have some grammar issues too. He also motivated everyone around him. The company benefited from his work. One way you could fix this is to actually put details after these sentences. Here's one way you could show this. Um, using concrete details. During his eight months at Asset Pro, so name of the company, how long he worked there, Stephen excelled in his duties. All right, let's see how. He always showed up on time and ready to work. Okay, good. He, even staying late several times a month to meet deadlines. Even more detail here, which shows that, um, that it gives evidence to Stephen's work ethic. These actions motivated his team and led to an increase in productivity during his two quarters at our company. There's so much more, de so many more details in this p paragraph than this one. Uh, another mistake that some authors make is to just list, because they think it's it does save room, but it's also really boring and it's like reading a resume without a sentence. Stephen brings many professional skills to the table, including we're going to see a list here: computer skills, internet know-how, research acumen, business sense, common sense, planning, and building relationships with coworkers. One way to fix this is to cut a couple of these out couple of these uh, skills and and show uh, in a smooth and natural way how they fit into Stephen's performance. Stephen is skilled in the gamut of important office duties from performing complex tasks on the computer and navigating the internet to boost boosting marketing to dealing with clients in a professional way to building relationships with his coworkers. So you've actually taken these lists and you've made them into a sentence and that is already more natural than the original. And to cap it off, he is an all-around team player. A little bit more words, a lot more interesting writing going on. And the length of the sentence is one way that you can tell that this is a more interesting and compl complex sentence. Um, another thing to keep in mind is you want to make your compliments of the student realistic and genuine. This is less realistic, less genuine. Subin was the best student I ever had in the history of my class. When a reader sees a sentence like this, they immediately think that the author is exaggerating or even making things up or lying. Um, you can slightly modify this to make it much more genuine. Subin is among the very best students I have taught in this class. That's such a nice compliment to get, but also it doesn't sound unrealistic. It sounds very possible. Maybe she's the top 5%. That's still a few students. It's still a great compliment. It's more genuine. And more realistic. This is less realistic, less genuine. She's an extremely she's extremely skilled and excels at every single thing that she puts her mind to. I don't know anyone like that. I know she will be one of the very best students in your graduate program. I'm not sure how she could know that. Uh, so let's be a little bit more realistic here. She shows great aptitude at a wide variety of tasks and works hard to complete whatever she sets her mind to. That's still extremely complimentary but you have great aptitude rather than extremely skilled um, and a wide variety of tasks versus every single thing. It's more academic language and it's more realistic. And she works hard, so you have that extra uh, quality of hard work put in this too. I'm confident that she will excel in your program rather than be one of the best students because there's no real way to know that your student will be the best in this graduate program. Okay, so let's go over a couple of more tips. So these are general tips for any essays that you write, but admissions committees are looking for, these are some of the traits that they're looking for. Self-motivation, competence, potential, hard work, these sort of traits. They're not just looking for intelligence or maybe less academic traits such as modesty. Although th that could be useful, but the, the more academic-oriented traits are better. Um, you should emphasize opinions from your personal perspective, but use objective facts. Be concrete in your evidence. Um, explain why the student is especially qualified for this specific program. So if they're applying for a psychology program, then you could use uh, more traits. Describe traits about empathy or um, open-mindedness or 
understanding other people. That might be more useful than it would for engineering, for example. Uh, finally, this is extremely important. You don't finish their draft and send it to the school. You want to rewrite it. You want to get it checked by peers, write it again. And finally, you should probably get it edited if you're not a native speaker or if you don't feel uh, super confident about your English writing abilities, your essay writing abilities. You can uh, take it to a editor and edit this letter because the editor can generally make this uh, shine in a way that they retain your meaning but improve it through more natural idioms and English expressions and make it more academic as well. So I want to show you what we do. Uh, I've shown this essay in the SOP webinar that we uh, played last week and but it's the the same idea for any sort of admissions essay. Um, this is about the length of a letter of recommendation and this is generally about how much editing you can see. So even if you're even if there's no grammar errors, you your editor can if they're good, which ours are at Wordvice, your editor can generally take your basic sentences and make them into something a little stronger and maybe more natural and that really show the warmth and the feeling that you have for your student but um, but elevate the language quite a bit. And if you want to revisit this video, of course, you're free to at any time, but we have a lot of resources on our academic resources page um, about writing specific types of um, admissions documents from personal statements to letters of recommendation to statement of purpose and MBA admissions essays. So once again, thank you for attending our admissions webinar. And we are going to be having a Q&A session about this uh, one week from today as well. So please check our admissions resource blog post about this webinar and you'll see updates for when that will be. And if you have any questions or comments or anything you'd like to know after this, any burning questions, please leave your questions in the comments. And as always, happy writing.